OK, so we're going to look at two really nice proofs of the angle sum formulas for sine and cosine, both of which rely on this diagram here. So our proof for the angle sum formula for sine relies on the formulas for the area of this triangle. So one way of expressing the area of this triangle is to do a half times a times b times sine of this angle at the top here. So we know that the area is going to be a half ab sine theta plus phi. So you can see here where we get the sine theta plus phi term from. But then another way of expressing the area of this triangle is just to do the base multiplied by the perpendicular height divided by 2. And we'll do this separately for each of these two right angle triangles here. So we'll have a half times c times h gives us the first area, and then the second area is going to be a half times d times h. So then you can immediately see here that we're going to be able to cancel this factor of a half across all of these different terms. And then we'll get sine theta plus phi on its own just by dividing through by AB. So we get sine theta plus phi is now going to be equal to CH over AB plus DH over AB. So now we need to relate this to quantities like sine theta, cos theta, sine phi, and cos phi. So how do we do this? Well, we can actually read these off from each of these right angle triangles. So for example, if we want sine theta, you can see the opposite is C, the hypotenuse is B. So this is telling us that sine theta must be C over B. And similarly, sine phi, the opposite divided by hypotenuse is D over A. So we know that sine phi has got to be D over A. Then we can do the same for cos. So cos theta on this left hand triangle, we've got H over B is our adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so we've got h over b for cos theta, and cos phi is going to be h over a for our adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So this is all really useful now because we can substitute these in to replace each of the letters here. So we've got c over b, for example, will become sine theta, and here we've got h over a will become cos phi. So this is where we get our sine theta cos phi term from. So we can write the whole thing as sine theta plus phi has got to be equal to c over b was sine theta and h over a was cos phi. So we've got sine theta cos phi. And then we can do the same trick for our other fraction here. So we've got d over a will become sine phi and h over b is our cos theta term. So we can replace this now by plus sine phi cos theta. Then you can see we've derived the angle sum formula for sine, at least for suitably small values of theta and phi. So next we'll have a look at doing the same thing but for the angle sum formula for cosine. And here our starting point is actually going to be the cosine rule. So we'll use the version of it where we rearrange to make cosine of the angle the subject. So we'll have cos theta plus phi is going to be equal to we'll have the sum of squares of the two adjacent sides. We've got a squared plus b squared minus the square of this side, which we'll write as minus c plus d all squared. Then we divide this by 2ab. And then we're actually going to use Pythagoras's theorem to deal with these a squared and b squared terms. So if we use Pythagoras's theorem, you can see that in each of these right angle triangles, first of all, we've got d squared plus h squared equals a squared. So the sum of these two gives us a squared. And for the second one, we'll have c squared plus h squared equals b squared. So c squared plus h squared equals b squared. Then we can use these to replace our a's and b's. Then we'll also expand this bracket. So this will give us cos theta plus phi now has quite a nice expression of d squared plus h squared, replacing our a squared there. Then we replace our b squared by plus c squared plus h squared. And finally, expanding this bracket, we get minus c squared minus 2cd minus d squared. And you see there's a lot of cancellation here. And we also still need to divide this by 2ab. You can see that the d squared cancels with the minus d squared. And similarly for our c squareds, we can actually group together our h squareds to a 2h squared. And then we're just left with minus 2cd, all divided by 2ab. So you can see actually our factors of 2 will all cancel as well. So then we'll write this as we're going to use our sine and cosine formulas there in a moment. We'll write this h squared as h times h. 
over AB, then minus CD over AB. So then it's just a matter of reading off, first of all, cos theta is H over B. So we can conclude then that cos theta plus phi, if we take this H over B as cos theta and our H over A, we can replace this by cos phi. We've got cos theta times cos phi. And then for our second fraction here, you can see that we've got sine theta is C over B and D over A is going to be sine phi. So we can replace each of these by sine theta times sine phi. And you can see there we've finished now deriving the angle sum formula for cosine, once again for suitably small values of theta and phi.